So in today's video, we'll be focusing on human anatomy. We'll be talking on what is human anatomy, what are the subdivision of human anatomy, what are some tips that could help you study human anatomy more effectively, and what are some smart ways to study human anatomy. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Judai Holome. I'm a final year medical student here in Nigeria. I make videos about medicine, lifestyle, and motivation. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to my channel. I don't forget to like this video. The two most dreaded courses in medical school are human anatomy and pharmacology. And these two courses have a lot of things in common. And the first one is that they are both bulky. And another one is the fact that it is the first time in your life you are getting introduced to and uh, this concept i said you did maybe you already have a degree in your latest field so in today's video i'll be telling you how i was able to get through anatomy so in today's video we'll be focusing on human anatomy we'll be talking on what is human anatomy what are the subdivision of human anatomy what are some tips that could help you study human anatomy more effectively and what are some smart ways to study human anatomy and also i'll spice it up with a little bit of my story like my experience with human anatomy so please stay with me human anatomy is divided into four major parts we have the gross anatomy we have the histology we have genetics then we have embryology some people would like to put neuroanatomy like on its own but i usually don't advise that because when you are studying gross anatomy you literally study neuroanatomy when you are studying uh, head and neck you're going to study the brain alongside head and neck i'm going to tell you what head and neck is when you are studying all the other regions of the body you're also going to be studying the nerves supply to all those regions so putting neuroanatomy as a subdivision is not really ideal or it falls under gross anatomy why do students struggle with human anatomy basically most of these people it is the first time ever in their life they are coming across this course and most of the terminology used in gross anatomy they are not english words per se most of them are borrowed um, words from latin especially and it takes time to master because it's okay the fact is learning uh, anatomy just like learning to speak a new language and for you to learn effectively you have to actually actively participate and also interact with other speakers of that language the first tip i'd like to give us is that you cannot study human anatomy effectively in isolation you need to be around other people that are also pursuing the same goal and interact like speak this language and exchange ideas so what is gross anatomy which is one of the subdivision of human anatomy it's just the, the study of the gross structure of the human body the macroscopic structure like as you're seeing me now the gross structure you're seeing and the gross anatomy involves the study of osteology which is bones um also involves the study of myology which are the moses also involves the study of neuroscience the nerves that supply these muscles and bones and lastly it also involves angiology which is the study of the blood vessels that also supply blood to these structures i've mentioned before and note this this um, subdivision of gross anatomy they are not studied uh, on their own they are not studied separately they are all studied together because they are intercal intercalated together in the body so you are not studying the osteology the bones first then coming back to study the angiology the blood vessels no you're studying everything and seeing the relationship in fact is anatomy is actually learning the relationship between these bones these muscles these blood vessels and these nerves so let's go further gross anatomy is studied in regions you don't study it haphazardly you don't just jump from one point to another you get confused because there are a whole lot to know so it is studied in regions and these regions are the head and neck that's our head and neck simple then you have your limbs the upper limbs which are the ones i'm raising and the lower limbs the one you work with then the third region is um your trunk 
so these regions are divided subdivided again for instance the limbs now are divided into upper limb and the lower limb while the trunk is divided into your thorax your abdomen the pelvix and perineum i'm going to subdivide that the thorax the abdomen the pelvix and the perineum makes up the trunk while the upper limb and the lower limb makes up the limbs in our everyday lives we refer to the whole of this structure i'm raising as the hand but in anatomy car language or in anatomy we don't refer to this whole um structure as hand this is like the upper limb because by the time you get to study or you start studying you realize that we have the arm the forearm and the hand and also the lower limb likewise the whole structure is not called leg we have the thighs the legs then the foot but this the purpose of this video is not to teach anatomy proper is to teach the principles so let's get back let's not debate most medical schools start studying anatomy with upper limb then from there they move to lower limb then to the um trunk after the trunk they move to the head and neck please note this down that the study of human anatomy unlike many other subjects it's not theory it's not based on how much you can read it's actually based on how much you can see so in anatomy seeing is believing if you keep reading without really appreciating these structures you might not really understand so anatomy is actually like studying a map just that this time around you are studying the human body and obviously the human body is tangible it's not something you have to be thinking like you have to be trying to reason it out it's actually something you can look at and touch it and feel it so that's why the study of human anatomy is done alongside um dissection if you are new to the medical school dissection is done in the anatomy lab there are dead bodies called cadaver they are specially preserved for medical studies from 200 level medical students are allowed to go into um, the anatomy lab to dissect these dead bodies as there any part of the pardon my use of um, dead bodies they are allowed to dissect these cadavers they are called cadavers and um, when they are studying a region they also dissect that region so that they can appreciate what they are reading if you are um, studying the upper limb you dissect the upper limb actually appreciate the structures and for that to help i will recommend a map of anatomy that has proven helpful over the years you might have heard about it the frank netta atlas of human anatomy it's a very very good book it's just made up of pictures and labeling okay let me tell you a little bit about my own story now when i first came into um medical school proper that's after 100 level because you start your medical school proper in 100 level i struggled a lot with anatomy this was because i did not really know a lot of things then that would have saved me like i was literally trying to read everything and and like create a meta picture of what i was reading instead of actually looking at the atlas of human anatomy and like learning the structure so and that costed me a lot so until i started using the atlas of human anatomy i really struggled a lot with anatomy and another mistake i made was trying to read all on my own reading on my own meant that i was not like actively revising what i was reading because of the bulkiness of the information i was assimilating as at a fast rate i was forgetting what i was reading and that only changed when i started reading with other people and also engaging actively in group discussions and another thing that saved my life was teaching everybody that even those that don't want me to teach them <laughs> any small thing i learn i will try and look for who to teach it to and the moment i started teaching it i was understanding the concept better and it was sticking more to my brain and it became very hard to forget so these are some tips that could actually help you learn anatomy more effectively using atlas of human anatomy like using pictures and not just looking at the pictures also attempt to draw caricatures of those pictures no one cares about your picture whether they are fine we are not in finance here we are in medicine all they want to know is is it correct is it anatomically correct and and do you know where what is so that's the main thing try and create a picture like also draw your pictures and label them then uh, the second one is don't read on your own try and read with people and the third one is 
engage yourself in active discussions contribute uh, don't be scared of being ridiculed by the time you don't do it you go back and learn those things and you won't forget them then the fourth one is any new concept you learn and you're very sure you know it very well teach it to people that might need your help and they will stick better so if you are just entry year two you want to start reading anatomy proper I would not advise you to go straight to Upper Limb or Lower Limb or any of the regions. The first thing you should do is actually to acquit yourself with the anatomical terminologies. And good anatomy textbooks usually dedicate the first chapter to uh, teaching these terminologies by learning the anatomical plane of movement, the anatomical position, and other terminologies. Like um, you get to know some Greek prefaces and all of that that would actually help you in understanding when you start reading later on so when you want to start reading gross anatomy proper after acquainting yourself with the uh, with all of the terminologies advice is to start with the upper limb and you don't just jump to reading the muscles or the nerves and blood vessels you are actually supposed to start with osteology learn the bones the first thing you learn for each bone you come across is how to put that bone in anatomical position these bones are valuable in the anatomy lab in the anatomy lab you could actually go borrow and and practicalize you need to know how to put them in an anatomical position then try and know how to label these bones then know what kind of ossification they undergo you cannot proceed to knowing the muscles that are attached to them the nerves that run through them and how they run through them the blood vessels that run through them in case of injury which vessels are at risk of being injured so th these are basically the things you need to know then you cannot move on to learning about the muscles what are the functions are they flexors are they extensors what nerves innervate them and what blood vessels supply them and when you're reading this you have to be tracing them in your atlas of human anatomy like the map you are following the course you are having a meta picture and as well seeing it firsthand how it is in the human body then another part of human anatomy is embryology uh, this one is not as bulky as the gross anatomy but it's a bit the concepts are really like unique in that this is literally the first time you are coming across this concept most people have already learned the bones in the body from secondary school most are even fortunate to learn a few muscles and nerves and even the brain but when it comes to embryology most people have zero idea about it so that's why it's most times challenging but it depends also on your school on, on how how wide the scope is but it's usually not very not as wide as the gross anatomy it's just embryology is just the study of the uh, of conception like how how fertilization takes place i the cell divides through series of um, stages and become the the full human being at the at the end of gestational age so that's just basically what embryology is about for genetics it's just like um molecular biology but the scope is also not wide some schools don't even do it but for the schools that do genetics it's just um the ones relating to um genetic diseases majorly and the scope is usually not wide then for histology histology basically means the study of cells the study of normal cells in the human body so it's just showing you the microscopic um views of the cells in the body obviously the brain cells don't look the same way as muscle cells and they don't behave the same way as muscle cells this is just what histology is trying to tell you and also the liver cells don't look like the the bone cells and they also don't behave like the bone cells so there are differences their uniqueness and how to identify them these are just what histology will teach you how i mastered histology was by looking i literally took this um, slides i compared it without their names all the time i will be looking at it trying to judge myself if i'm getting it right trying to design their unique features so by repetition i was able to master it because at the end of your year two or year three when you're writing your um, first medical board exam part of the exam requires that you be tested in histology too slides will be displayed 
or placed on the slide or microscope for you to identify and write one or two things about. So knowing these slides and mastering them early enough will save you a lot of stress. Hope you've learned something today. Are there other tips you are aware of that I did not mention in this video? If yes, kindly comment them below in the comment section. I will make sure to reply to them. Thanks for watching and do have a blessed day.